Many people over the years have tried many different ways of making steam locomotives more efficient, everything from using different fuels to different body shapes and boiler types. In Italy, one-way designers thought they could improve steam locomotives was by simply adding another boiler. Which, surprisingly, worked. As steam locomotives operate, water in the boiler is heated into steam, which then flows to its cylinders to create movement before being exhausted. Because the used steam is exhausted, over time the water in the boiler will deplete, and so footplate crews need to keep topping it up with water carried in the engine's tanks or tender. The problem is, this water is usually cold, and as a result, when injected into the boiler, the cold water decreases the temperature in the rest of the boiler, which lowers the boiler pressure, which then in turn negatively impacts the engine's performance. The engine then needs to burn more fuel in order to get the now colder boiler back up to temperature. In an ideal world, you want to make the water you're putting into the boiler as hot as possible to decrease the amount of energy needed to boil it. It's a problem many engineers have tried to tackle since the very early days of steam, and has led to many unique feed water heater designs. Some simply involve heating the pipe the water is injected through while others involve blasting steam from the boiler into the engine's water tanks. For many Italian railways, however, this wasn't enough. Unlike Britain or Germany, Italy had to import most of the coal it needed to operate its railways, usually at a high cost, and as such, many Italian railways wanted to reduce the amount of coal their locomotives consumed to save money. In the early 1910s, Attilio Franco designed the Franco Boiler, a system designed to preheat a locomotive's feed water using its exhaust gases. Rather than being exhausted from the locomotive's funnel, spent steam and gases from the firebox would instead instead flow through what was essentially an additional boiler. This would heat up the feed water before it was then injected into the main boiler. Using the exhaust gases to preheat the water ensured as little energy as possible was being wasted, and helped the engine get the most out of its fuel. Franco's design, however, wasn't used until 1932 for the quadruplex locomotive built in Belgium, it being fitted with two Franco preheaters mounted in front of the main locomotive's boilers. Italy didn't start experimenting with Franco's design until 19. 1937, when a cab forward class 670 locomotive was modified and fitted with a preheater on its tender. After several trial runs, the engine showed a fuel saving of around 20% compared to the rest of the class, though the engine was discarded once the tests were concluded. Around this time, Atelio Franco passed away, and development of the design was taken over by Dr. Piero Crosti, leading to the system becoming known as the Franco Crosti Boiler. Crosti furthered the design in 1939 by modifying five FS Class 685 engines by adding two smaller preheaters that were would be positioned either side of the locomotive's boiler, instead of one big one at the front, giving them the unique appearance of having three smoke boxes and exhausts mounted both sides in the middle of the boiler. These were classified as 683s, given special streamlined casings, and trialled on various passenger services. Like the 670 before them, the streamlined cases were given for aesthetic purposes only. Crosti's changes proved to be successful, with the 683s proving to be 18.9% more economical in their fuel usage compared to their class 685 counterparts. Though it's worth noting the 683s also had an improved boiler design compared to the 685s, so not all of their success in efficiency can be attributed to the Franco Crosti system. With the Italian State Railway seeing the improvements in fuel consumption, they built 94 new locomotives using the Franco Crosti system in 1940, classified as 743s, followed by several other other classes being modified and fitted with new boilers both during and after the Second World War. As Franco Crosti boilers proved to be favoured in Italy, it wasn't long before other railways across Europe experimented with the system too. In 1948, a 280 engine in Spain was modified and fitted with a Franco Crosti boiler. Unlike its Italian counterparts, however, it was fitted with only one preheater, which was mounted under the boiler. Even more unusual is its exhaust supposedly travelled through the middle of the engine's boiler. Why it was put in such an impractical place is beyond me. 
West Germany followed suit, equipping two Class 52s with preheaters also under their boilers in 1951. By 1958, Germany had fitted feedwater heaters onto 31 Class 50 locomotives, with the engines showing an overall improvement in terms of fuel efficiency. Oliver Bullied also fitted an Irish locomotive with Franco Crosti heaters in 1951 as part of his experimentation while developing turf burning locomotives for Ireland, though the end result result performed poorly. Ten of British Railways' 9F locomotives were fitted with Franco Crosti boilers, though rather unusually compared to other designs still used the engine's original funnel, as well as the heater's exhaust that was mounted on the right side of the boiler. Its ordinary funnel would be used while lighting the engine or if more airflow was needed while in operation, but when not in use would be closed off. The 9Fs were already some of the best steaming engines in Britain, and while the Franco Crosti heaters did provide a slight boost in performance, it wasn't enough to justify fitting more engines with them, especially given how complicated they were to maintain. That brings us on to some of the drawbacks of the Franco Crosti boiler, and why every railway didn't just immediately fit their engines with them. First of all was their weight. Because the feed water heaters were usually mounted above the wheels of most engines they were fitted on, they greatly increased the engine's loading gauge, meaning some engines would end up too heavy to run on their intended lines. Some railways got around this by mounting the heaters under the engine's boilers instead, and while this did help with weight distribution, it did mean that the engine's boiler and cab would have to be raised to compensate, often leading to issues with the engine's overall height. Fitting it in front of an engine smoke box like earlier designs would help with both weight and height, but at the cost of making the engine longer. Secondly was maintenance. Many Franco Crosti designs suffered from corrosion due to the buildup of acidic flue gases in the feed water heater, meaning parts needed to be frequently replaced to keep them operating. This, combined with the extra hassle of cleaning what was essentially another boiler, only added to turnaround times and maintenance costs. It's also worth noting that some engines fitted with these feed water heaters also had to be fitted with smaller boilers to help accommodate them. As a result, some engines like the 9Fs ended up being less powerful than their unmodified counterparts. Most railway engineers took note of this, and instead just focused on making the locomotive's boilers more efficient instead of adding these preheaters. And finally, the biggest reason why the Franco Crosti system didn't really take off outside of Italy was because high-grade coal wasn't as scarce in the rest of Europe. As I said earlier, Italy had to import most of its coal, and because of how costly this was, railways were eager to reduce the amount of fuel their engines burnt to save money. Meanwhile, in countries like Germany and Britain, high-grade coal was a plentiful resource, and as such, fitting and maintaining Franco Crosti heaters would likely end up more expensive than just paying the difference for the coal. Simply put, for all the benefits and savings in fuel the Franco Crosti boilers provided, they were held back by their excessive weight, excessive maintenance, and the fact that you could get similar results with other, more conventional feed water heaters and a better designed boiler. The fact that only a relatively small number of Italian locomotives were fitted with Franco Crosti boilers despite their success shows they weren't always an automatic upgrade for every engine. The engines that were improved, however, did go on to have a full working life, some operating as late as the 1980s, with a handful making their way into preservation. The Franco Crosti boilers then, while not as major of an improvement as they seemed on paper, did prove to be quite a boon for Italian railways, even if many other countries didn't have as much use for them. Subscribe for more.